Hello, amazing statistics students. Welcome to Business 9. Today we're going to gather a lot of information all about statistics. Hopefully it's fun and interesting. Statistics today uh, is basically needed for any job that you apply for. And I'm living proof of that since basically every job I've had, I had to, uh, in the last 10 years, involved statistics uh, in some way or another. And I never worked as a, uh, in a statistics department or doing statistical research, but today, due to the high demand uh, and presence of consumers as well as uh, providers, marketing production in any department of any given company um, has to rely on statistical data to get ahead, basically. So why, you may ask, um, Usually I suggest watching this uh, quick video about amazing statistics by uh, VG Business that shows you uh, some of the amazing um, work that statisticians do in order to uh, find out what's going on in the world to do research and, and show you the results. With COVID uh, this past year, th that was definitely the case. Um, there was so much statistical work being done, I was fascinated by finding out what was happening in each state and the percentages and how it kept on climbing up and going down and climbing back up again. So uh, work like that is done on a regular basis by uh, companies all across the country, all across the world, really. So t statistics itself is basically the science of organizing, analyzing, and presenting that data. While a statistics a statistic itself is uh, a single measure. So uh, statistics can be descriptive, where you actually collect, organize, and summarize the data you present, or it can also be inferential. And that means you can take a sample and, um, and say that a certain percentage of uh, the population is based on your sample. So let's do a quick exercise at home right now. So for example, think, uh, ask around your home if you don't already know uh, the members of your family that wear glasses on a regular basis. And then you total those up and you divide them by the total number of members in your household. So for example, in my house, I'm the only one who wears glasses. Uh, there's uh, four people in my household, so one over four would be 25%. So I could uh, infer that our family as a whole, which we have a pretty large family, 25% of our um, larger family uh, tends to wear glasses. And that's a way of uh, statistically measuring um, the... Um, I wear uh, that is uh, held by uh, my family, for example. And you can do the same thing at your, in your household, find out what the percentage is, and then uh, estimate what the percentage would be for your whole entire extended family and by um, deducting that the sample you took of your own family applies for your larger extended family. And basically, that's statistics right there. Uh, that's a study that, that uh, I often do with students just to um, get them started, get their feet wet on statistics. So as you can see, it doesn't have to be rocket science um, to go ahead and get into statistics and do some fun exercises, as you will find out soon when you start doing assignments on the book. So uh, the other example I was going to talk about uh, was Kaiser where I worked for close to about 10 years. And Kaiser is big in surveying uh, their members uh, whenever you go in. So it's a bit of a pain, but since Kaiser is a nonprofit organization, they really rely on uh, staying in business by um, doing what customers uh, request. So their statistical surveys reveal that customers first wanted low cost which is an obvious one. So lo locust uh, service, uh, but they also wanted uh, quick and easy service 
uh, preferably via mobile phones. So they launched um, a Kaiser Physician uh, app, which uh, lets you video conference with your doctor way before COVID had even hit. So you might ask, why are they making me um, take statistics when <laughs> I want a business degree so I can sell things on the internet or start my own app uh, and become famous? But uh, reality is that because uh, there's so much data uh, out in companies today, um, companies will tell you that they're looking for employees who have statistical knowledge. So companies that hire you because um, you have this kind of uh, uh, knowledge or experience might want you to run numbers on, say, uh, their competitors. Um, they might ask you to go online and research uh, how many products um, a competitor company is selling, um, what, how much they're selling it for, uh, uh, what are the other competitors out there that you might want to um, take a look at. Things like this um, that involve research. Um, it's, uh, it's common uh, in any company that you work for. Um, even though you, you might not necessarily work for um, a statistical department, they just, um, they just use this data uh, to remain competitive, to remain um, in the market and um, be able to uh, remain in business. So um, as I mentioned, I worked at Kaiser for a number of years. And um, although I didn't work in the statistics department, I worked in Treasury for uh, a number of years. We, uh, we often had to run statistics on communications. So for example, we had to see out of the 180,000 employees at Kaiser nationwide, which ones had signed up for email communications, um, then determine the percentage of those that didn't sign up. Uh, for example, your hospital cleaning crew who might not have uh, a Kaiser email assigned to them. Um, we didn't, uh, we didn't have to, um, uh, go ahead and, and take a look at uh, every meal email sent for the company, but we did have to determine what the cost was, uh, for sending, uh, printed material. And oftentimes it ran thousands of dollars. So we wanted to make sure that the material we were printing was it worthwhile. So, um, so we, we had to do this kind of work. Uh, do research work, find out which employees were affected, which employees had already email, how much um, savings we would have if we were able to communicate via email versus paper, and from there um, determine whether the project was worth um, moving forward. So, um, so I had to uh, also um, often do projects regarding uh, databases and consolidating the data. So my first project at Kaiser uh, when I was first hired was to sit with my team members and find out how many reports they were going through and how much data they process so that we could um, uh, move them to a database that would do that kind of work for them. Uh, this led to um, process improvement uh, based on the statistics that uh, we calculated, my teammates were spending about 50% of their time actually reading reports and going through emails. And a lot of that information, it wasn't even needed. It was information that uh, we could have easily uh, sorted on a database and find out which one was relevant, which one was really needed, and what we needed to do about it. So at the end of that project, um, we did quite a bit of process improvement. We also used a lot of computer skills and technical literacy uh, so that we could run uh, the department more, more efficiently and um, did a lot of work on Excel, uh, which as I mentioned um, in our syllabus and on the class announcements, it's, uh, it's a great idea for you to get started with uh, Excel tutorials so that you can go ahead and be able to uh, learn Excel as we go. Uh, you will definitely need it in this course. Um, some of the uh, Excel tutorials that I suggested is Learn Excel in 30 Minutes by Sal Caselli. Uh, it's a quick YouTube 